you guys in the Crocodile Army gave me questions about a month ago before I went to Ireland. And so I think by the time this comes out, you'll have already seen my Ireland video. If you haven't, I'll link to it below. And so, let's get right into it. So how do you feel about the protest over a flag in Ireland a few months back, says the Undead R241? Yeah, that was unfortunate. It's one of those things, that delicate balance that they have in Northern Ireland, um, that they hopefully still have since the, uh, the Good Friday Accords in 1998. It's one of those things, you don't want to do anything to upset that balance. And by, by that stupid symbolism of how many days a year or a month or whatever it was about the flag and which flag was going to be flying over City Hall, as soon as you change something, no matter how relatively minor, it's going to upset one side and then it's going to make the other side happy and then that will start this whole conflict and there'll, there'll be this, well, we want this concession in return. It just sort of stirs up a hornet's nest. I don't even know why it was such a pressing issue that it had to be changed. It really shouldn't have been changed. Uh, WZ0077 says, have you ever visited a psychic? Uh, no, I have never visited a professional cold reader because I know what they do and it's cold reading, of course. Um, it's sort of like the John Edwards of the world, you know, they get up there and they say, ah, I'm getting someone in the audience who knows someone who died that uh, starts with the letters J or M or R or something like that, and then someone jumps up and like, oh yeah, that's me, and you know, it's total nonsense, but anyway. So, uh, Yarmo Tveren says, uh, are you ever going to come to Finland? I have been to Finland. Uh, I was in Finland with Mrs. Zonstar in 2007. Um, that was before I was making videos. There actually is actually an old video on my channel of, um, of Finland, just some clips from it, and uh, not nothing, you know, nothing at all like my current videos. Just it was just random clips of stuff I saw in Finland. Um, but yeah, crazy language you've got there. And I'm a quarter Finn, so I. But I know I don't know any Finnish. I literally I don't think I know a single word of Finnish. Um, but my grandmother did, I guess. So um, Corkfop says, what are your opinions on the NSA and Edward Snowden? Um, yeah, so Snowden, I'm sure this is probably gonna probably gonna annoy a lot of people because I get the feeling that a lot of you guys are like really, you know, Snowden's this great, you know, whistleblower guy. I, I, I'm not sure that I feel that um, that black or white about Snowden. In fact, I, I'm much more I'm much more inclined to think of Snowden as more of an opportunist and and probably a bit of a narcissist at this point as well. I just don't know that he was doing it for the types of pure intentions that some people seem to be ascribing to him. Um, I, I could be wrong. I, I'm not in his head. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, now now he's um, got uh, asylum with Russia, and Russia is increasingly even more so not really our friend. Um, and uh, yeah, that, I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think that um, on the NSA part of it. They, it does look like they were getting a huge amount of data. Um, what they were doing with that data is key, and I don't know what they were doing with that data, but of course it's the NSA, and there's really no oversight, so you can never know what they're doing with that data or whether they're using it for the right purpose. Um, it's really, I'm not exactly sure, uh, when, they, when they go down to the level of looking at an individual's account or an individual's activity, uh, that that sort of thing should be something that uh, that gets a warrant you know, before you can do that. And data in aggregate, I am less concerned about. And I know that's something that probably a lot of people are like, well, you should be concerned about all of it. Well, aggregate data, I'm less concerned about. Um, specific data, I'm more concerned about. And the amount of oversight has to be higher. I, I'm, I'm not sure of all the answers to these things. Um, but uh, I, I, there's a lot of there's a lot of gray in that, so I'd need to do more reading on it myself before I even come to a, a fully formed, completely you know a confident uh, conclusion for myself. So that's my take on it right now. Uh, Dark Matter twenty five twenty five ah yes, DM twenty five twenty five says many Americans say that the U S is the greatest country on earth despite having never been to other countries. So as someone who regularly travels the world, I'd be much more interested in your opinion. How does the U.S. really stack up? Well, there are a lot of different, I mean, I've been to, so, I've been to a total of 23 different, 23 countries, including, I'm going to include the U.S. in that, so 23 countries. And I would say that one thing that stands out a lot with those other countries is 
the overall level of caring for your fellow citizens is higher, I think, in other countries. There's definitely a a very strong undercurrent, I don't even know if it's an undercurrent, I think it's it's just the current in the United States, that people are like, oh, screw those people, they suck, or they're lazy, they, they don't deserve, you know, whatever, but I deserve whatever it is, you know, there's a lot of, it, and I know that there's a lot, there is of course a lot of, there is to some extent some, um, some selfishness with the humanity in general, but the level to which people will say, screw the other guy, but I'm going to get what I want and be totally fine with that, I think that's much higher in the U.S. And in other countries, even countries that are, that are not as well off um, traditionally, I mean, you got countries like United Arab Emirates. I mean, they take care of their people, their citizens really well. I mean, yes, I know, believe me, before you start typing about how UAE is a terrible human rights abuse, yeah, I know, I get it, you're right. But the one thing that they do is... And, and this could be said of most European countries as well, most other places I've been to, they do take care of their citizens better. They seem more concerned about that. So that's one of the biggest things that I see. And the U.S. is not number one on most, uh, most measures of, you know, where, of the best uh, place for just about anything um, in terms of quality of life and all that sort of thing. But, you know, I, I know the, I understand the U.S. system. I'm not really particularly looking to live anywhere else outside of the United States. So, uh, where Peter Peckham says, where and how long are you guys in Ireland? Cheers. So, we were in Ireland for a week. We were there for six nights. Spent uh, two nights in Galway, one night in County Cork, and in Cork, and uh, then three nights in Dublin. So, that was how long we were there. And Chris the Asperger guy says, if you could live in any historical area, which one would it be and why, and in what ways do you think you'd be the same and different? It would be interesting to live in the Renaissance, I think, because that would be you could you could see firsthand. That is, if I was not like a, a peasant or you know some whatever whatever. Uh, if I were someone that were actually in the midst of all of that, um, all the human minds that are are sort of all sort of waking waking up to some extent. Uh, that that hey, there's a whole there are different ways of looking at things other than the way that we've looked at things in the last thousand years in the Middle Ages and that kind of thing. That would be pretty fascinating to see, I think. So that Dan M guy, as opposed to that damn guy, says, is the Guinness really better there? I've been told it has to be modified for export. Yes, that's what they told us too, that it has to be modified for export. I forget exactly the reason, I'm sure there's, I'm sure someone will Google it, but um, the, the Guinness there doesn't taste any different to me. I couldn't tell the difference, but I'm not really a Guinness drinker anyway. It's a little on the bitter side for beer. I like I like the, the sort of, not, it doesn't have to be super sweet, but that's a little too bitter, Guinness, for me, so not a, not a big fan of it. Um, though it was good with the, they, there was some black currant, I had some black currant put in, in, the, uh, in one of the Guinnesses, and I was like, hey, that's, that, that uh, softens it up a little bit. So, anyway. Uh, Grange34 says, do you think there's more mental illness in the States than in other Western democracies? If so, why is this? More stress due to longer working hours? I don't know that there is more mental illness in the U.S. than in other countries. Um, it's, I don't think it's treated as well. I think that uh, all the way back from, from uh, you know, deinstitutionalization under the, in the Reagan years, you know, where do you think all those mentally ill people are going to go? They're just going to end up on the street if they're not in, in a facility, a lot of them. So uh, I, don't think, I don't think we treat them very well. So they're, they're probably more visible because they tend to be more homeless. And we don't, there aren't sufficient services for a lot of them, but, uh, Unified Dynasty says, Are you now or have you ever been a card-carrying member of the Communist Party of the United States of America? Well, Mr. McCarthy, <laughs> no, uh, no, I have never been, and I'm not a proponent of communism in general anyway. It's, it's one of those, it's one of those, I know, I know everybody's heard it before, but it's one of those, you know, great on paper, and like, sure, yeah, we'll all, we'll all work as hard as we can, and we'll, you know, we'll all get what we need, and yeah, it never ever works out like that. It just doesn't.